We were trying to get recruited by Guggen Squad. That's what we're doing here. Okay, yeah. Let it down. It looks so uncomfy. Uh, but basically, I want to go over all my setups from this past season and some anything I really had an opinion about. So, I mean, most lures... I didn't really have a huge opinion on. There are some I, want, I will talk about, but for the most part, I just want to go through rods, reels, uh, and stuff like that uh, for anyone who who might be buying or getting interested in bait casters. Because for me and for for Nathan as well, this was our first year trying bait casters, um, and they're definitely a lot of money. Like even the cheapest bait casters are still an investment for 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 people like us. And a lot of videos that I see people doing this, they say like it's a budget video and they're using like hundred dollar reels and stuff like that and that's not a real budget and I, I i'm poor so i actually have a real budget um <laughs> so i'll just go through those uh, my rods and reels and stuff like that that i used this year so i guess we'll start with rods we'll go from the top down this is definitely the budget rod so this is the uh south bend trophy stalker rod um me in particular i have i think it's a five six ultra light so i mostly used it for small bass panfish um, I caught some trout on it as well. Definitely, I think the high. I think my first video I posted on this channel, the the feeding frenzy with thirty percent. That's like this rod's highlight reel. I went. I mean, that thing held up to three, four pounds smallmouth and really gave pretty much no give. Um, obviously, it's a cheaper combo or it's a cheaper option for me specifically. I went to a bargain store in South Portland and I bought this thing for I think seven dollars. Um, but definitely for seven dollars, it's worth the money. Actually, I actually probably the highlight would be a couple a couple weeks later. I caught a couple big pike on it, so I would give this. I w I'm gonna do halves. I would give this a four and a half. It's not perfect, just because I mean it is on the cheaper end. But as far but for the money, it definitely held up for me. And I'll probably I'll try to link everything in the description, just so the description's down here, dummy. No, we should link it. Yeah, link it in the description. It's down there. Don't listen you to him. You can link a video up here. I'm not going to link a video up here. I'm linking the description. All right, whatever. So, yeah, I'll, I don't know what the retail is. I'll figure it out. It's probably pretty cheap. What I mean, you, he, Nathan, he got the combo, the South Bend combo uh, earlier in the season. What size did you get? It was the spinning combo. It was 6'6". Six, six. Was it 6'6"? Six, six? Was it yeah. a medium? It was, uh, yeah, medium 6'6". Six, six. What'd you think? I know you used it sometimes up at, up at my camp and stuff. Yeah, it fish. was good. It held up. It wasn't... I would and say, we caught some big bass up there. Yeah, I would say four stars. I'll actually, if I if I remember, I'll actually put a picture right here somewhere um, of us fishing up there. He actually caught some, we caught some pretty big, large and small mouth. I was using my bait caster, so I wasn't using this, but he was using his South Bend, and it held up pretty well with some big bass. And so definitely definitely a budget option, but for the money, it really held, it really holds up. So I would give it a four and a half out of five, four out of five. I would give it four. Definitely yeah. budget rod, but for the money, it's definitely worth it, I think. So next is... Uh, for the most part, I think it's got pretty positive reviews. Um, the Berkeley Cherrywood bait casting rod. Um, for me, I got the 6'6 medium because for the most part, I wanted to use it for moving baits and stuff like that. Um, but I also did use the occasional smaller jig, like quarter rounds or smaller jig heads and stuff like that. For the most part, I would say it held up really well for some bigger bass. I definitely have a couple complaints uh, for it, though. For one, the reel grip, when you go to slide it in. Uh, even when it's fully tight on the rod, I paired this with my Black Max. Even when you've got it fully locked in your reel and you've got a big fish on, you can still feel like the reel almost trying to pull out of there. Um, so this isn't even really all that tight. Um, so that's definitely a complaint. It almost feels like every time you get a good fish on, you're just going to fall out your reel. Um, but it held up to some big bass. So I had to get a cheap replacement for the rest of the season. And even I asked a friend, I'm like, what do you think of the cherry wood? And he's like, no, don't get it. It's not worth it. It snapped on me. Um, he got the spinning rod. So I don't know if that made a difference, but I mean, I used it for most of the summer and I really, it held up pretty well. Like I said, that's probably my only complaint. Uh, and then I had such a strong opinion about it that when I dropped the whole combo in the water and it sunk to the bottom, I went to Cabela's a couple days later and bought it again. If you're just starting to get into bait casting, I think it's a pretty good um, rod, especially for the price. I think the retail is only like 25 or 30 bucks. So that's, I mean, that's nothing. And so for that, I, I mean, it's pretty damn cheap. Um, so for the, for the price, I would give it, I'd probably give it a four, maybe a three and a half out of five. It's not perfect, but for smaller bass and stuff like that, and even some bigger bass, as long as you're careful with it, don't try to boat flip every big bass, because then you'll snap it. That's just dumb. 
Um, but for the most part, it, it's it's pretty good. Next is probably one of most people's, especially if you fit, you shop at Walmart, most people's favorite spinning rod, uh, the Abu Garcia Vengeance. Uh, especially if you get it at Walmart, I got the 6.6 six medium, which I think is the only one they sell. They might sell a 7 foot. I don't know, but Walmart's a good budget option for fishing, but for variety, you're definitely not going to find all that much. They don't have all that much in the Walmart stores. I have no complaints about this rod. It held, it holds up really well for a medium. It's pretty stiff, so and I used it for some some finesse fishing before I had it like a dedicated finesse combo. Uh, and it de I think it definitely held up, uh, no problem. I even caught some small pike on this. It really it it's got that flexibility when you have a fish on and you and you want to get it, and you want to keep it on. But it's got that stiffness where you can use some finesse stuff like like Ned rigs and drop shots and stuff like that, and you feel those little taps. Um, it's stiff enough to feel those. It's really light, which I really like. A lot of older rods that I've been using, are, they feel heavy for their size. Um, but for a 6.6 medium, this just feels, it's stiff enough that you, like I say, it's it's a good medium. It's stiff enough for to feel those little taps, but it's also flexible enough to, to hold up to those fish and not just snap. Uh, so I would probably, I wouldn't give it a perfect score. I'd probably say, I don't, I don't know, it's going to be hard to get a perfect score out of me. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll say, we'll say four and a half out of five. Just because, I mean, I don't really have any complaints, but it really, you really have to blow my socks off to get a five. I mean, five is perfect. And I don't think, really think anything is perfect. But this one was actually an interesting one. I, um, earlier in the summer, a friend of mine who doesn't really like bait casters had a, he said he had a black, Ma uh, not a black max, I'm sorry, an Abu Garcia Pro Max combo that he bought used. And he doesn't like bait casters. So he was like, you want it, I'll sell it to you cheap. So I was, I was all in. Um, and for 90% of the season, I just assumed this was, uh, the black mat, the pro max rod and stupid me didn't decide to read, you know, right here where it says, uh, end sport, but uh, this is an end sport bait casting rod and I forget the actual name, but it is an end sport rod. It's, uh, uh, kind of an off brand budget option that you can find on Amazon and it comes with, it came with two rod tips. Um, for me, I put the medium heavy on. I used it for a jig and heavier moving baits. So once I realized that the heavier spinner baits were bad for that cherry wood, I actually started using this um, for those heavier spinner baits and it held up a lot better. It comes with the medium heavy tip and the medium tip, um, which I didn't use, but I mean, this held up just fine. So why wouldn't that? Um, but as far as opinions for rods go, I probably have the strongest opinion about N Sport. I think for the price, I think they're super good. Uh, especially since I left a review on Amazon. I don't even know how long this has been in circulation. My friend bought it used last year and who knows how long it was in the market before that when my friend bought it. And then I used it for a whole summer and not once did I have any problems with it. It's super sensitive. It's super tough for those big bass. I was using jigs with it. So I was doing pretty heavy hook sets with it and I never had any problem with it. Um, so really I think budget option, this is a really one of, I, I would really consider these off brands um, on Amazon just because it's got a name you might not have heard of before. It doesn't mean it's a bad option. I might honestly give the N Sport uh, bait casting rod. I might give it a five out of five. It just is really nice. It's got it's, it's pretty stylish too as far as rods go. It's a nice budget option. I think the retail for this is maybe like forty or fifty bucks. For now, I use it for smaller jigs and heavier moving baits, uh, just because I use it with seventeen pound fluoro uh, with my Pro Max. And it held up really, really, really well. I don't think I ever lost a fish on it. But I like how this clicks when you go to bring it in. Or, or loosen it, tighten or loosen it. It's got a good hook keep right here that actually moves. So depending on what lure you have, it, it helps. But I usually just hook my lures up into the reel. Um, but I, I'd give this a 5 out of 5. I think for the price, it's really nice quality. It held up super, super well. Um... I guess that's it. I would I say if you rod. if you want to see this rod in action, I would check out my MTB Slam for July. Um, I was I I had the um, black and blue jig with the riot bait with this combo, and at that point I think I still had braid on it, um, but definitely earned its keep. I think I probably caught like four or five bass on this combo with those riot baits, uh, and never had a problem. So yeah. Yeah, check out that video. That was a good one. Yeah, link in description. The reason I wanted to save this one for last and not go in order is because this is another end sport rod. I got this pretty late in the season. It's a uh, finesse spinning combo. It's like that. that um, at least that's what I use it for. So it's the end sport rattlesnake, uh, seven foot spinning rod. I forgot to mention the uh, the end sport baitcaster is also seven foot. 
Um, so this is really similar as far this as quality goes. Foot. Yep, seven foot. Um, Looks longer. The retail, I think, was pretty similar. I think it's around 40 bucks, maybe 50. Um, this comes with three tips, the medium light, medium, and medium heavy. Just because it's what I was kind of looking for, I put the medium light on here and I used it for some finesse fishing, Ned rigs, drop shots. Once I realized kind of what I was missing out with with the Abu Garcia Vengeance, this is just a little more sensitive, a little lighter, um, and a little longer just to feel those little sensitive taps. For my experience with N-Sport, it's been a really, really good one. Everything just feels really top quality for the price and like i said i mean i think some people go on amazon and like because when i look up bay casting rods on amazon and sport the end sport bay casting rod is, is immediately what comes up um but i think some people see that off brand and kind of just are immediately turned off by it and i guess i'm just kind of here to say try not to because i with that i had this that my confidence with the the end sport bay casting rod basically gave me no choice but to choose this for my finesse rod it's for the price it was what i was looking for i know n sport makes good stuff um i would really get i i just because i haven't used this one quite as much i've only really used it for maybe a month um, as opposed to the whole summer or longer i'm gonna give this a four out of five uh, i really had no complaints it's just that i really haven't been able to put my time into it um and decide if i like it or not um for sure for uh what i've used it for it's been awesome um, I also like, I like that it comes with the different tips just in case I have a friend come up to my camp and wants to fish. I definitely don't trust him with my bait casters. Uh, so I can just put on like a medium tip or a medium heavy tip and let them fish a big spinner bait or something like that. Uh, that's super simple. But as far as finesse, this is basically my finesse combo and it's definitely held up. So I guess just try to try to trust the off brands a little bit, give them a little bit of credit. At least if you have Amazon prime, you get the two free two day shipping plus you get kind of a, a pretty loose return policy so if you for some reason you don't like it they they'll take it back if you just don't like it so next i guess we'll move on to reels i'll start with spinning uh reels uh this is the reel that i paired with my uh finesse setup with the n sport rod this is the okuma avenger something i never heard of before but again i was at martin's that bargain store and it definitely was a turn off immediately because pretty much their whole fishing section was a bunch of these and i was just thinking if they have so many it's probably not a reliable reel they sent them there to just sell them cheap um, but I happened to just take some time and look them up while I was in the store and they have really good reviews and for, and I think it retails around 50 bucks and people were giving it four and a half, five star reels or reviews for a $50 reel. And I think this, it was, I think $20 in there. Plus they were selling them 33% off. So I got this for like 15 bucks instead of 50. So I've got 10 pound braid, put it on it right now. I've been using it with my end sport finesse rod. Um, what else to say about it? It's held up really well. I don't have a super strong opinion about this reel just because I think it's mostly because I've never really done strictly finesse fishing before. Like I've thrown Senkos and stuff like that, but never, I've never done a certain rod for it. So I think when I first started, I had my drag set a little too loose. Um, I lost some fish due to that. Some pickerel were cutting my line and stuff like that. But I think it's just because I had my line, my drag set too loose. I couldn't even reel in on some two pound pickerel. Um, but as far as like, I mean, it feels, it feels really nice. It's real smooth. It's got a nice uh, handle. It feels, it, it's really smooth. I really don't have any, it doesn't sound bad or anything. Uh, and it's gone through about a month ish of where this is the 2,500 size. So it's a little more, it's a smaller for that finesse setup. Um, so I would give this the Okuma Avenger. If you can find it discounted, it's definitely worth a buy. I don't know that it'd be worth 50. Um, but I also fish so much more budget than a lot of people. So, I mean, reels can be up to $500. So for a reel like this, people might have no problem spending 50 bucks. Um, but for me, it was, uh, it was, I don't think I'd spend that much on a spinning reel. Um, but for 15, I mean, it's a no brainer for sure. So I'd give it just, and I, and same thing with the N sport finesse rod, just cause I haven't spent a ton of time with it. I would say four out of five, no problems with it. Really nothing bothering me. I think it's mo the problems I've had with it is just cause I don't really know how to fish it. I'm still learning, uh, more finesse styles of fishing. Um, but I just haven't had a ton of time to, to really form a good opinion about it. Um, this is definitely one of the ones that I haven't had a ton of, ton of time with. So yeah, four out of five. Real quick, I'll talk about uh, the Ugly Stick reel. Uh, this sh I forget what it's actually what it actually is. I think it's the Shakespeare Ugly Stick GX something GX two thirty. Um, it's pretty it's a pretty smooth smooth reel. And like I said, when I first started, I was just grab one spinning combo for everything, and that's what you do. Um, and that one spinning reel was the Shakespeare Ugly Stick. 
Uh, last time I was in Walmart and I was checking it out, the combo, the whole combo for this older Shakespeare Ugly Stick was $36. I don't think, I, I will say that cannot be beat. For the quality of the stuff and how long it lasted uh, and the price, that cannot be beat. So I'll, as far as the reel goes, I think I've had this reel for three years and I've never had a problem with it. So I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. Uh, I've mostly just used it with 15 pound braid for pretty much everything. It's kind of my... I don't like I don't like using fluorocarbon for just all over kind of all around kind of setup. I like using on the lighter side braid, 10, 15 pound braid. Um, so I, for the last couple of years, it's pretty much just been my do everything combo. Uh, and I, I will say, I've I'm really only getting into all this kind of stuff now this year. I've never cleaned a single reel. So in three years of not being cleaned, this thing still holds up really well. It's still really smooth. It's got a little bit of noise. Um, but I, that, I, cleaning these reels is definitely going to be a priority for me in the off season to make sure they last. But for three years without cleaning and some pretty hard uh, wear and tear on some big bass and pike, um, I definitely think this is an easy buy for anyone for anyone trying to get into fishing, especially if you're going spinning combo, super easy to learn. Uh, even the new ugly stick is only 50 bucks for a combo. That's that's much and nothing. So this is the Abel Garcia Silver Max size 30 spinning reel. Um, I used it with the uh, Vengeance 6.6. Six. Um, at first, it was just kind of my all-around type of setup for people who wanted, for friends who wanted to fish with it. Again, not using, letting them use my baitcasters. Um, I do have some some negative opinions about this for sure. Um, for the money I spent on it, I think it retailed around thirty, um, which was the first real, just real I'd ever bought. Before then, I only bought combos. So for thirty bucks. I really don't think it's worth buying. Um, it feels kind of cheap. Uh, it, it just doesn't hold up. Sometimes when you go to open the bale, it kind of gets stuck right here. And that really gives me beef because that happened earlier in the season. And I don't think I ever showed this clip, but this happened. Oh. What happened? So yeah, I was basically fishing up in the spring for the pike and the bale, I didn't notice the bale only opened out halfway and I went to go throw that $15 whopper plopper out there. And it shuts and snaps my line and I lose a whopper plopper within two casts. Um, so that definitely gives me some bad beef. Uh, overall, it's it it, it, it Wait, kind of no. looks cheap. It looks kind of cheap. It feels kind of cheap. Um, it's pretty smooth. And since then, it's held up really well. I uh, did some smaller topwater fishing. If you want to see this again, check out my MTB Slam for July. I used it for the Hula Popper 2.0. Um, it still holds up pretty well. Um it just, uh, I don't know, it feels cheap. I have some beef because it made me lose a whopper plopper. Uh, this bothers me that the bale doesn't always completely open up. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get it to do it now. But sometimes it'll just kind of stop right there and you'll have to kind of go back down and click it up. Um, and in those opportunities, you could lose lures uh, when it snaps your line. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. It's pretty good for the price, maybe. I think there's probably some better options out there for around the $30 range. Um, yeah. So to start with the bait casters, we're gonna go with we'll go cheaper to to more expensive. I've got the Abu Garcia Black Max. Um, as far as bait caster, as far as the Black Max goes, I really don't have anything to, anything bad to say. I think it's a I think if you really want to start getting into bait casters, this plus the the Black Max combo itself is really your only option for a budget bait casting combo. Uh, to get into it, you uh, now that I, I started with just the Black Max uh, at the beginning of the season. And so that felt amazing to me when I was catching fish on it. It felt amazing. Obviously, now I've upgraded a little bit. So you can kind of feel, I mean, some of it's plastic. You, and oh, actually, a lot of it's plastic on the outside. So you can definitely feel that it's it's lesser quality. But I've had absolutely no problems with it for the whole season. It's caught me some really big bass. Even at the beginning of the season, I had some heavy braid on here. And I was doing some heavy jig fishing with a 6.6 six medium combo. Um, and it was pretty sensitive. But I paired it for the second half of the year with that Berkeley Cherry Wood. I think that if you're looking to build a, a combo uh, to start out bait casting, I think the black, I think the yeah, I think the black max cherry wood is the best, but also the best budget option. I think that's your best, your best budget combo out there for the price. I think it's really good quality. Like I say, this has never broken for me. I've had no problems with it. I mean, it backlashes occasionally, but this is my first year using bait casters. I imagine it's probably more just me being bad uh, than the reel itself. So I'll say, I'm going to say 
four and I'm going to say 4.7. I'm going to be really specific. 4.7 out of five. It's not perfect. Really, there isn't a bunch here that's going to be perfect for me. I have my doubts about everything, but for what I've asked it to do for a whole year, I've put this thing through, uh, through it for a good season and it's held up really well. So yeah, I'll say 4.7 out of five. I would say four and a half. I definitely recommend it. It's, and even the, even the, uh, like the combo with the baitcaster. Yeah. It's, the combo is a good option. Bad. The combo is a good option, but I think a lot of people, and even me, um, talk about it's almost like building a PC like you got to get your money's worth a little bit more if you build instead of uh, Getting the combos or so if you want to build um, I think black max cherry wood is a really good budget combo if you want to just get the black max combo for someone You know who's getting into fishing. I think that's a really good option. So I'll put this out of the way all my baitcasters are Abu Garcia um, I'll get into more of it into it more at the end when I'm done with reels But I think as far as budget reels go Abu Garcia can't be beat I think a lot of I think there's a lot of really good reels out there like Shimano, Daiwa, and a bunch of other brands, but they really don't have any budget options uh, for people just getting into it. So I think as far as budget bait casting reels go, I don't think that uh, Abu Garcia can be beat. They've got really quality stuff for pretty cheap, and I really don't know that there's any big name brands out there that do cheap reels like they do. So knowing that, my next reel is the next one up, the Abu Garcia Silver Max, um, right hand retrieve like all of mine. It's really smooth. I've definitely put this thing through the ringer. I've dropped it a couple times, uh, even though I've had it for like one third of the time I did the Black Max. I think I got it in August. Um, so I, I definitely had my time to put to put this thing to the test. Not a ton of time. It's got a 6.4, uh, 6.4 to 1 gear, gear ratio. ratio. Yeah, that I was lost on me for some reason. Um, what The one thing I looked into when I was looking at the Silver Max, and you got the, com the Silver Max combo, um, a lot of people said this reel was really good for your jig fishing, your slower finesse fishing, um, which I agree with because what this what this reel does, which I really like, is for most bait casters, you flip that bail and you cast out. The only way to start reeling again or to lock it is start reeling, which is fine. But for jig fishing, I really like that. I don't know if you can see it, but this has that little thing pop out right there. So instead of having to reel, you can just click that to lock it, um, which I really like. Uh, especially for jig fishing when you wanted to just sit there and let the bass kind of sit look at it What I find weird though is all my research into bay casters when you're looking for finesse fishing and jig fishing um, Especially when you're fishing around heavy cover you want a faster gear ratio to get that fish out of there quicker um, so I find it odd that of all their reels they decided to put that feature on one of their slowest gear ratio reels I feel like this would be a feature you'd want on a gear a reel with a heavy, a faster gear ratio one that people are more likely to use jig fishing um but i paired this with that end sport bait casting rod for the second half of the year uh the first half of the year i put my pro max on that rod and you, i did use it for jig fishing um but for the second half of the year once i got it i paired it with that end sport for heavier spinner bait fishing uh overall heavier moving bait and i caught a bunch of pickerel with it some bass uh, because I got it later in the season, I was doing more fishing down in southern Maine than up in the Belgrade Lakes region where my camp is. Um, so overall, I definitely think it's an upgrade over the Black Max. You can kind of tell when you're casting out. It just is a little bit smoother. Um, and that's and I kind of like comparing these because I kind of have the three cheaper options as far as bait casting reels go from Abu Garcia. And it's kind of fun to see the differences. And also, another one, uh, as far as drag goes... Um, you got that clicking with your drag where the Black Max doesn't. And having that kind of noise when you're adjusting uh, is really helpful um, for sure. Another thing the Black Max doesn't do, but I think for the... I actually got the... I don't know what this retail's at. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the just the real retail's at. I got it on sale, which is why I got it. I got this real quick sale on Amazon. I think it was marked down to like 35 whereas that reel was... The Black Max was on Amazon for 30 So you spend the five extra bucks and you get the upgrade, which is what I did. Um, so I didn't pay full price, so I don't know what the retail is. I'll put it up here, like with everything else. Um, but I'm going to give it another 4 out of 5. Um, it's got its issues. It doesn't seem to really hold up. It's got some scarring on it. Um, whereas I've had the Black Max for way longer, and it's got no scarring at all. You also dropped that one. Yeah, I've dropped them both, though. I mean, they've gone, they've both went through the ringer. Um, I'm, not, I'm pretty clumsy. Um, so I drop a lot of stuff. Um, but, I mean, it's still holding up fine. It's got some scraping on it, but it doesn't. It's nothing that affects the reel. Um, so yeah, four out of five. 
if you're looking for kind of an upgrade, if you've got the Black Max and you're looking for an upgrade, the Silver Max is a pretty good one. Uh, the one thing is you really don't get that much of a difference. If you want to try some jig fishing, you get that feature with uh, locking that bail. But otherwise, you really don't get all that much. It's the same gear ratio. It's pretty similar to the Black Max. I think that's an upgrade. Yeah, just it's basically just an upgrade. You get better material and stuff like that. You can definitely tell it's less cheap. Um, but honestly, between the Silver Max and Black Max, I would just stick with the Black Max because they both perform pretty similarly and you get to save some money. Um, but this is still a nice reel if you're looking to, to upgrade. So the last the last reel I have is the Abel Garcia Pro Max. Uh, again, right hand retrieve. And what I like about this is it's got a faster gear ratio. It's 7 1 to 1, um, which so I was using it. I used it all year for my heavier uh, jig, jig and cover fishing to get those fish out of there. Um, for the first half of the year, I used it with that N Sport bait casting rod. Uh, and then toward the end of the year, I paired it with an older bait casting rod I just found in the shed. I didn't really like it, but uh, it was I wanted to use that N Sport with the Silver Max. Um, but I think as far as holding up to some big fish goes when you're finesse fishing, I think this is a really good option for the price. I think this reel, reel retails around 100 bucks. Um, I ended up getting it from my friend with that N Sport rod pretty cheap. Um, so I definitely didn't pay full price. Um, and that's kind of where the problem is for me. Is this reel worth a hundred bucks? I, I don't really know. For the most of the year, I had it paired with 50 pound braid. Again, using it as that heavier top water. I used it with whopper plopper, um, and some of my heavier, uh, top waters, like a jitterbug and stuff like that. And I was using it a lot with, uh, my heavier jigs, my three eighths ounce, my half ounce, uh, jigs. I didn't really go any heavier than that because I was fishing, uh, a lot of weed, weeded areas and any heavier than that, they were just sinking into the weeds. Uh, and getting stuck um, but I think on a four uh, five star system I'd give this a four and a half out of five I had this from early spring and I use it all the way through till a couple weeks ago when I got it off that crappy bait casting rod um, and it gives it gives me no problems it casts so smoothly the braking systems are pretty easy to figure out they're really sensitive so those finite adjustments where you go between casting smooth and far, you can cast it really far without really worrying about backlashing. Um, and one thing I like about having the braid on here is if I do backlash, if I send it a little too hard and I do backlash, I think braid is a lot easier to get backlashes out of than fluoro. Um, and I don't use mono. I really don't like mono. Um, so between those two, I definitely think braid's the better option for, especially for your jig fishing. You've got no stretch to the line. So you feel those little taps, you get real strong hook sets. Um, I think most people know that, uh, and I'm just kind of repeating information that everybody knows, but I felt the need to put it out there. Four and a half out of five, not ten. Um, and that's pretty much it for my setups. Um, I don't know that there's anything I really want to talk about as far as tackle goes. I do want to do just, from my experience, I do want to go over a couple brands, though. Um, definitely as far as jig and finesse fishing goes, my go-to and I was always reliable with was striking. I used a ton of their Rage Craws, their dual-tailed grubs. That's a majority, as for trailers and for Texas rigs and stuff like that, that's a majority of what I used. Um, and I think the coffee scent also really helped as well. A lot of them come with that coffee scent. So I think overall, I think that was a really good buy. Um, they're on the more expensive side, I guess, for plastics. Um, I don't know what their retail is. Maybe like five and change for five or six of them. Um, so it's on the more expensive side. But honestly, between them and Guggenbait, I think you save the extra buck a bag and go Strike King. Um, and there's some cheaper options too out there, but I, I was catching them a lot on Strike King. I didn't feel the need to, to swap anything out. One that I don't have as much experience with, but definitely used a lot during the MTB Slam is Riot Bait. I used there, I think it's the Little Fuzzy or the Little Furry or something like that, but I, I paired it with a Strike King jig and I caught a ton of bass on it. I think it's got really good movement. But as far as line goes, I don't have any like super good opinions about any line. As long as it works and doesn't backlash, I like it. Um, I usually just go for the for a cheaper option. Not super cheap, but for example, I got some Berkeley fluorocarbon at Walmart because it was in the clearance aisle. And I've been using it for most for like half the season and it's been working fine for me. Uh, one of the cheaper options at Cabela's for braid is Power Pro. I use that on most of my setups for braid. It's never let me down, so I guess I'll recommend Power Pro. Um, or the Cabela's brand, I know I use that as well. From my experience, I have a hard time recommending spider, uh, what is it, spider wire? Spider wire braid is what I used at the beginning of the season on my Vengeance, Silver Max, Spinning Comp. I think part of the reason, because I was using, I think, 15 to 20 pound test, um, I think part of the reason that snapped off was poor line, 
after I after I snapped that off, I went to go test something else on, and I was just kind of looking across the line, and it was fraying all over the place. Um, it didn't seem very high quality, so maybe I just got a bad spool. I don't know. But from my experience, I definitely can't recommend Spider Wire Braid. I would go with Power Pro, the Cabela's brand. Neither of them have really let me down in any way. Um, and they're similar price range. Maybe Spider Wire is a little cheaper, but it'd be worth the extra buck or two to get line that is reliable, at least from my opinion. Um, I know some people have good opinions. Um, I, I can't think of anything else. Uh, so overall, I think if you're going for budget Baycaster, I think, I mean, you already know what I think. Abu Garcia, if you're looking for sponsors, I would love that. I would literally endorse everything you do. Yeah, Columbia, if you here, Columbia, I really like your apparel and your hats. Um, I've got that one. I've got your hoodie right here. I've got this, one. this hat right here. And I think I've got another long sleeve. Um, so if you want to hit me up. I also have a hat. Um, if you want to hit me up, I really like your apparel. We could pair it with some really good strikes with some Rage Cross from Strike King uh, and some Abu Garcia stuff. Um, so as far as this video goes, I think we're going to sign off. We're going to sign off. I got to go feed her. Um, I guess if you liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Definitely helps me out. I'm gonna hope to do some hunting uh, stuff this coming hunting season because uh, opening day was yesterday. I'm not as passionate about hunting as I am out fishing, um, but I definitely do it and I think it's fun. Um, so hopefully you'll see some hunting stuff and then obviously there'll probably be a little bit of a gap until we get some ice on the ponds. We can go out ice fishing, um, but definitely once ice fishing starts and then spring fishing next season, uh, expect some more consistent content, uh, hopefully. So yeah, I guess like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Anything you want to say? Peace. What he said. Peace.